Hi, I'm new to this, so you might have to bear with me. I'm usually on the other side of the camera taking photographs rather than being on this side of the camera being videoed. So, a little, little, little bit worried about it, but we'll give it a crack. Um, the reason I'm doing it is um, I'm a retired photographer. I've recently taken up lino print and um, love it, absolutely love it. Uh, I bought myself. Um, uh, easy etching press from creative printers of london um i decided to up my game i love it so much that i wanted to buy better equipment um and uh, i posted some stuff on instagram um i think they seemed to like it which i was really pleased about and they've asked me to do this little video of the process so um i'm gonna go through the design and the carving and the printing of a lino print um hope you like it i'm not an expert i'll give you a few tips and just show you what i do and hopefully um you'll get something from it so uh without further ado let's get stuck in right so here's the project um it's a beautiful 1967 lambretta um fantastic thing design classic really like them i think if i'd have been born 20 years earlier i think i might have been riding around on that um just gorgeous looking thing uh this particular scooter is quite a famous scooter it's the one used by um uh, the film quadrophenia um written by the character jimmy cooper and it went for thirty six thousand pounds at auction so quite a valuable piece of kit so we're going we're going to have a crack at this it's quite ambitious but we'll give it a go so um i've decided to uh, go with this view of the scooter um just shows off the lines nicely i like the way you can see all the mirrors on the side as well um, which was obviously an important feature for the, for the mods um, um showing off all that chrome and mirrors and what have you so we've gone for that view there so the first thing I'm going to do is to get that image into Photoshop and I'm going to invert it. I'm going to flip it round. Obviously when we're printing it's a relief print so any lettering or words or anything like that need to be backwards. So when they print they come out the right way around. So I've flipped it round in, in Photoshop. I've desaturated the image as well, taken all the colour out and um, increased the contrast a little bit. Basically we're going to be putting that onto tracing paper and then we're going to be using carbon paper so we've got a lovely piece of a3 lino um standard hessian backed lino um i've got some black carbon paper which you can get online i haven't seen it much in the shops but i got on some online and some a3 heavy duty 90 gsm tracing paper with the image printed out on it i'm gonna get it nicely lined up um, I've trimmed it down so it's slightly smaller and it's so I can tape it to the lino so it doesn't slip around when I'm doing the marking out um, and that's ready for the next stage. So we've got some kit here. I thought I'd just go through quickly what I use to get um, a decent print. Um, we've got cutting tools, pens, etc, etc. I'll go through it just so you've got an idea of the type of stuff I use. Um, I started off using these um, SD lino cutting tools, um, interchangeable blades, just screws off, you can put a new one in there. Um, nothing wrong with these, absolutely nothing wrong with them, I still use them, um, but quite basic um, and not really designed for fine work. So I moved up, once I got into it and decided I wanted to spend a little bit of money on it, um, I bought this beautiful set of Swiss made file carving tools that come in various shapes and sizes very sharp very comfortable to use very ergonomic um, uh, obviously a little bit more expensive than this one um, but really essential you can probably see from that one there that it's a very very fine cutting edge here so this is the one i use more than anything really to get real fine detail and and then they go up in sizes and grades and shapes until you get wider ones for taking large pieces of lino out so very very important that if you're going to get into fine detail work you're going to need something with a little bit more 
um, cutting power really. To keep them sharp, we've got, um, this is called a, um, a sharpening strop. I use it in conjunction with um, horn and compounds. This rubs on here or onto a leather strop and keep your blades nice and sharp. I sharpen my blades before every session, basically. I've also got a chisel here, which is quite handy for taking big pieces of lino off once you've got your design carved into the lino and you want to flatten the rest so you're not leaving marks on the print chisel is very handy you also need this little beauty this is an old suede brush from clark's which um funny enough the mods used to wear uh clark's desert boots but there you go that's just a coincidence um and you need to give your lino a really good brush before you start printing so i use this it's uh um, purpose built really We've got this thing here as well. So as long as you don't mind looking like a bit of a geek, that's fine. Um, these are magnifying glasses. So um, you need to be able to get right in there and see what you're doing in good detail. My eyesight's not what it used to be, basically. Um, so I rely on these now. I wear these um, all the time when I'm carving. It's got a little light on there and you can adjust it and there's various grades. But um, again, another essential piece of kit. We're gonna be using pencils to trace uh, the tracing paper. So I've got a nice set of pencils there and a little battery operated um, pencil sharpener. Couple of line up, uh, a couple of marker pens, just if you need to emphasize a piece of um, area on the line or that you don't want to carve or want to carve they come in handy. So there's a little very quick whistle stop tour of some of the kit. I'll be talking in more detail about the etching press when I start actually printing with it. Um, it was a game changer really, so uh, I'll, I'll be telling you why I bought it and um, how my printing's improved since I bought it, uh, uh, but we'll do that when we're actually printing with it, I think. So I've got my really attractive um, um, magnifying glasses on. I'm tracing down through the tracing paper, through the carbon paper onto the lino block using a hard pencil. Um, I use hard pencil um, just because I, it gives you a nice crisp defined line um, which is why I invest in some professional tracing paper. Um, the, the pencils are kept very sharp, you don't want it going through the carbon paper, through the tracing paper so I use a nice heavy weight um, tracing paper to do that. Um, you can see the light I've got switched on that helps you see where the, the, the graphite's going um, and we will continue till we've got everything covered. So obviously uh, this is going to take hours. Um, you know I, I don't want to keep a video running for this it'll be like watching paint dry so um, we'll switch this off um, and we will resume once I've Done all the pencil work, um, which, as I said, is going to take hours. So, uh, pretty much finished the, the trace now. Um, so, hopefully, we've got a nice image. Well, I know I've got a nice image because I've already looked. Um, but just before um, I show you what I've traced, I'm just going to mention a couple of things. Uh, first, um, the seat here and the um, spare tire on the back. We're a little dark, I couldn't really see any detail and uh, this 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 part, part of the front of the scooter as well was a little dark. So what I did was I reprinted the trace but lighter so exposing for the shadows. So these bits were lighter so I, 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 I masked it off, put the second sheet on top and redid these bits because I wasn't quite happy with the detail. Um, so that's worked nicely as well. I've also, before I peeled back um, the trace, I put some registration marks around the paper. So through the, through the masking tape, through onto the line or just in case I needed to put it back and it slipped and I wanted to register it back into place so I would redo bits that weren't very, very good. Um, so if I just lift this up carefully now, I'll be able to show you the trace underneath. And there you go, we've, we've got the trace. So you can see there the seat detail is a lot better now. I'm still not happy with this bit. I'm gonna go over this bit again. Um, and there's a few bits that need to be um, um, filled in. Didn't quite work on the trace. There's some marks here as well, which could be off my wedding ring or anything going through. So what I've done is I've just put a little cross through, um, knowing that that's not part of 
of the um the plan for carving um so i'm going to go over it again with with marker and um, so i've got a nice thing but overall i'm quite happy with that So as you can say guys, um, carving's underway, um, nice and methodical, nice and slow. I just thought I'd quickly show you um, um, the technique I'm using. Um, I'm using the finest tool I've got. As you can see, it's 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 a really fine cutting edge here. Um, a tiny little V-shape, um, U-shape, sorry. Um, very very narrow at the top so I'm get really fine lines getting real detail um, so I'm, I'm running as you can see I've got a line on my on the right side here here and I'm running the right side of the blade along the line I want to cut not on the line just to just to its left so I'm running down once I've got this line here I'm going to take the next size tool up I've got which is a slight a slight curve, a slight U shape. I think you can just see it there. And I'm going to start taking a bigger line out. I'm going to angle this curve away from where I'm cutting. And what that does, it means I'm I'm just taking out the scrap away from that important line. I'm not. If I angle it this way you can cut into your line, you don't want that. So I'm just taking it, angling the blade away from the line I'm cutting into. And now I've got a better guideline in here. This will all be carved out at a later stage, but um, at the moment, I'm just getting um, a good perimeter line right round, and then I'll start moving inwards. I'm also, if you, I'll just do it on this scrap here. Um, I'm going in at quite a shallow angle, so I'm going to carve at a shallow angle like this. If you go in too deep, you can see here what's happened. It's already, that becomes harder to manage, harder to carve. So I'm going in at as shallow an angle as possible to start with. And you can see I'm getting quite fine lines there. If I go in this way, I'm, I'm getting really deep, ugly lines. So I don't want that. I'm going to go in quite shallow for now. 37 hours later um <laughs> quite a complex carve obviously lots of detail in here um some bits were very difficult that in particular the wheel took a lot of work um getting all the brake cables and what have you but overall i'm quite pleased it's spent quite a lot of time chiseling out all the excess um and we're pretty much ready to go for a, a few test prints i think i'm going to get this sorted out onto a piece of board ready for printing uh, I've trimmed the lino down so it's ready for printing, just securing it to an A3 board um, with some double sided tape. The board's actually supplied with the press so that's fantastic. Um, uh, once it's all secured down I'm going to mark off um, using some paper just so I know where the paper's going to um, sit when I'm printing. I use this stuff, it's fantastic, a horseshoe paper supplied by hand printed in Bognor Regis. Let's have a look at some printing equipment then before we get going. Um, I'll quickly go through um, what I use. I just set up in my kitchen. Um, so uh, you can see there's a plastic sheet on the table. That's essential. Um, but I'll go through um, some kit with you. Um, I've got a, a selection of rollers and inks in front of me. It's always good to have a selection of rollers. This SD blue handle um, is, my, is my preferred roller. It's got a slightly softer roller um it just seems to work um uh, very nicely on on the block i've also got a little little roller there um to getting into the nooks and crannies the small bits come in handy to deal with the mirrors on the, on the scooter and what have you i use this ink this is caligo safe wash um it's an oil based ink but it's it's water soluble so you can wash up um using um just washing up liquid and warm water uh, fantastic stuff um 
the extender is basically a, it's an ink without a pigment it's got a transparent pigment and it just thins the thins the um the ink down a little bit i just find it it works nicer on on the roller it works nicer on the print when it's thinned down a little bit so i use extender in conjunction with whatever color i'm using um i, I make greetings cards and um I, I, I like to get them dried as soon as possible so i also use this ink it's schmink aqua it's uh it, it, it's specifically designed for line or printing um, um great stuff dries very quickly i've got a nice perspex sheet here for rolling out perfectly smooth looks a bit dirty but it's, it's uh, great for rolling out and uh, here we see the press we've, we've got the press set up um before i go any further with talking about i just want to show you this handle here this is a this is also a game changer um the hand this is the handle that comes with it just fits on that nothing wrong with that but um when you stand on making a print um just having that extra leverage is really useful. I love this thing. It just it makes um, printing so much easier. You don't have to stand right over it. You can you, you know you can operate one handed if the roller's not too tight. We've got these um, boards fitted and these feet. That, that this is now screwed down to a couple of old kitchen runner boards. Um, means it's a nice steady base the, the thing doesn't move around at all it just stays exactly where you want it it's got a good weight to it anyway um, reassuringly heavy i like to call it when i when i got it out of the box you could feel the weight on it came with that but it's now fitted with the wheel and the new feet just uh, makes it um, even more usable so the blocks there we've got um, um, some um, basic tools ready just in case we've got some parts of the block when printed when when the ink rolls on it you might see some ink dots just where the raised bits haven't been taken off uh, you can you can use masking tape to cover those up and um, what i'll do if i'm in a hurry and i've got some ink on there and i want to get a print out i'll, I'll cover with masking tape um, and then i'll go back later on and, and and rectify that get rid of the bit that's been troublesome the bit that's raised up um, so you've got a nice clean print without the use of masking tape um, I, i've got a stamp here i won't be using that today um, english stamp company will make custom stuff for you so i've got my logo on there and there's a little bit of information about what the website those go on the back of greetings cards basically but i just thought i'd show you that because it's a lovely thing um, um english stamp company um uh, highly recommended I've, I've also got these things here and if you've got a little bit of ink on your hands and you want to pick some paper up and guarantee you don't get ink on the paper that's just a, a piece of tin can <clears throat> that's been cut up um stops ink getting on your print um handy little thing i've also got this this is a, a fantastic little trick um this is a piece of cuttlefish just uh the, the stuff that you give to parrots um it's it, if you're very careful with it you might have a little ink dot on your print and it's a fantastic print you don't want to get rid of it if you rub very carefully very gently with one of these things it will take specs off um saw this online and thought oh, i bet you that won't work it actually does if you're careful with it and uh, gentle with the paper it, it it will take a little mark off so uh, uh, a, a fantastic little trick a word on the masking tape this is this is really low tack masking tape artist's tape um uh, if you use ordinary masking tape it can be really harsh and um you, you get a great print you've masked it off a little bit and, and you take the masking tape off and it leaves a horrible mark on the paper so i use low tack masking tape just giving the block one last wipe with some rubbing alcohol before we uh we start inking up um make sure it's nice and clean got some extender in the black ink there get that spread out we're going to start rolling it out to a nice even layer on the perspex sheet and here we go start inking up this is where you're going to start um this is really important when you do your first ink up you're going to be looking for little bits of raised area that haven't been carved out properly there um, if you leave those alone um you're going to you, there's one there just popped up um and another one there we're going to get rid of those but we're not going to get rid of them yet we want we want to do a test print so we can see where these problem areas are we're going to leave them on for now and just put a nice cheap paper through there 
um, and make sure um, we can see where all those problem areas are we're going to, and then we can either use masking tape get rid of them or um, um, uh, um, carve them out basically so there's another one just popped up there so um, had a look at the test print was very happy with it didn't need a massive amount of work done where really I was uh, quite pleased I didn't have lots of um, chatter as it's sometimes known um, to take out um, so we're ready to go for a, um, an actual print using Hosho paper got it all ready um, put two or three layers of um, um, newsprint in there and we are ready to go so we're going to go nice and gently nice and smooth um, this really is I mean I know I've said it before but it, it was a, a, a real step up when I bought the press um, it's just so easy that you get consistent results from it that's the thing I love about it before when I was hand burnishing before using the back of a spoon the the, the results were hit and miss um, and now you get um, a, as long as you take time with your block and your blocks nicely carved out and you get rid of all the unwanted marks you get prints like that um pretty much um 100 of the time um i'm absolutely over the moon with that uh, there's a lot of hard work so sort of 40 odd hours gone into this but um really really pleased there you go 43 hours condensed into about 25 minutes so i hope you got something from it i know i did Lino print something I really love. Um, I'm going to put some credits up at the end with uh, you know just information of some of the suppliers and people that I've mentioned during the video. Thanks to Creative Printers of London for encouraging me to do this. Uh, I really enjoyed the process. Uh, I'm really pleased with the print uh, and I, lo I love the press. So um, hope you got something from it and um, I'll see you later possibly.